This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another informational Valheim video. Today we're going to take a look at some more tips and tricks. Let's get to it. When you finally reach the plains biome, you're going to run into death mosquitoes, as many of you know. And one of the worst things that can happen is when you die in the plains biome and you have to go back and get your corpse. Now normally I would recommend gearing back up to go back into the plains biome because it can be relatively dangerous going back in there to retrieve your stuff, but I'm sure many of you are like me and just want to run in there butt naked and get your stuff back. And when you do that, death mosquitoes can be a bit of a problem. But did you know that you can easily jump them when they come to attack you? When you see them strafe toward you, all you need to do is run at them and jump over them. The key to getting this to work is to make sure that you catch them in the middle of their strafe because when they hit the end of their strafe, they attack. This trick is also really handy for attacking them because you can quickly turn around and hit them while they are paused for a second doing their attack animation. All of us know that when you get raided, the raids usually go for all of your tamed animals. Even if you are in the base and attacking enemies from the raid, they will still target your animals and this can be really frustrating. One of the things you can do to protect your chickens is to keep them in a dungeon. You can easily hatch chickens anywhere that you can put down a fire and because chickens initially come in egg form you can transport them inside of instances so for example a troll cave or any dungeon that you have cleared out all you have to do is take the eggs in there put down a campfire because you do not need a workbench to do so I highly advise surrounding that fire in signs because you do not need a workbench for signs either this will help keep the chickens out of the fire and then you can just throw the eggs on the ground and hatch them as normal then you can go back and collect your eggs or kill off your chickens, breed them in there, do whatever you need to do because they are now safely stowed away inside of an instance, protected from anything that may try to do them harm. So this next tip is one that I thought everyone already knew how to do, but apparently some still do not as I got asked how I sank my chests down in the floor when I was live streaming Valheim. So I figured I would toss it into this tips video. And that tip is how to sink things into your or structure or into the floor. The whole process is pretty easy. Basically, you put down your chest or whatever else you want to sink down into the floor. For example, your crafting station upgrades, and then you place the floor over top of them. So if you already have your house built, all you simply need to do is pop up one of your floor tiles, put down whatever you want to bury in it, and then place your floor tile back. And if for some reason it sticks out of the ground more than you want, or you want to completely bury it, all you have to do is dig down just a little bit and then place the object and place your floor tile back over top of it, obscuring it from everyone's view. The next tip has to do with fishing and the changes made to fishing. So many of you probably do not realize this, but the whole progression for fishing is currently more or less pointless. There is only one fish that you can get through the new fishing system that really does anything substantial and that is it just creates one of the best stamina foods currently in the game. All Although it doesn't give you much more stamina than the current highest right behind it. So it gives you 90 and the mushroom omelet gives you 85. The fish and bread gives you 30 health where the mushroom omelet gives you 28. The fish and bread lasts for 30 minutes where the mushroom omelet lasts for 25 and they both give 3 HP per tick. It's not really worth the hassle that you have to go through in order to get it. As far as the other fish, they are literally no different than the normal fish that you can get with the basic bait. You don't get any more fish meat from them when you butcher them and it doesn't matter what level they are, you get the same amount of fish meat you get for them per level as you do with the fish that you can catch with the basic bait. So other than hunting them for trophies around your base and kind of like a personal achievement type situation, there's really currently no reason to go through the fishing system unless you just want to do it for fun. Now this may change in the future, but as it stands right now, I highly recommend just fishing with the basic bait. It's easy to get, which makes it low hassle. It's a gold sink, which is needed, and it's going to provide you with the same amount of fish. The next tip is how to prevent the refining iter process from damaging your structures that you have around it. For those of you who are unaware, when you place the iter refinery, it won't really do anything until you start to refine iter. Once you
you start this process, it will shoot off little particles. And when those little particles hit something, they will do about 30 damage to whatever they hit. If they hit you, they will do a mild amount of damage and poison you for a short period of time. This can be relatively frustrating. However, black marble is completely immune to the damage that this causes. And there's a super easy structure that you can build with this. All you have to do is place down two by three foundations of black marble, place the Ida refinery a little bit towards the front. So you want to put it towards the center and then just off center it just a little bit towards the front. And then you just surround it in the one by two blocks with the exception of a few spots that you can see as I'm building it on screen where you want to use the little one by one blocks. You want to make sure that you leave an opening at the top so that you can insert the soft tissue as fuel and two openings in the front one so that you can collect the refined iter and the other one so that you can put the sap inside. As you can see it has a relatively small footprint and it effectively prevents any damage from shooting out from the iter refinery and damaging anything around it and it also prevents the refined iter which also shoots these particles off from damaging anything around it until you collect it. And that leads me into my final tip which is how to delete the diverger wards so that you can take over their houses without aggravating them. And this is relatively easy to do using the refined iter. All you have to do is take about eight to 10 of these with you when you are traveling the mistlands and hold them in your inventory until you find one of these locations. Once you do, you just line yourself up to the side of the ward and you begin to throw the iter behind it. I highly recommend throwing the iter behind the ward so that it catches as many of these particles as possible. Each hit will do around 30 damage to the ward and most of these wards that I have seen are never full health so the particles will destroy it relatively quickly. Note that this process may destroy one or two little other things inside the base and it may also hit and damage the diverger themselves and it can also damage you if you hang out too close but you shouldn't have to leave them there very long and it will definitely destroy the ward without aggravating the diverger. From there you can just go through and push them all off the top of the building or outside and shut the door and trap them all outside so that they can act as a base defense for you. All right, and that is pretty much it for this one. Hopefully you found this video helpful and informational. If you did, consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other videos. And if you don't want to wait, you can find a link to another guide on the screen right now. I want to give an absolute massive shout out and thank you to all of my channel supporters for helping to keep these videos a sponsor free. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to become an official channel supporter, check out the links in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.